Yo, 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 this is your boy King Known Uncensored, man. I am back with another heavy heater. <laughs> Episode 76, ready to go, Nate, Nate, nigga. <laughs> yo, man, let me get started, man. Let me get started, bro. Wow. <laughs> Man, 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 <laughs> Nate Robinson got knocked the fuck out. Um, if you were under a rock last week, um, Saturday was the big Mike Tyson Roy Jones fight. Um, it was just excitement all over the world for this, and they called that shit a draw. Tyson beat the shit out that man. Roy Jones only won like one round to me. But nigga, before that fight, Nate Robinson was talking a lot of cash shit while he was talking about fighting Jake Paul. And it was a big back and forth on social media. Rumor has it that both were only paid $600. And in the second round, Nate Robinson went down like a sack of potatoes. He tried to get back up and fight. But he got knocked the fuck out and won a probably a top two, top three most embarrassing moment of 2020. Probably the top three epic fail of the year. I think that nigga just woke up. But, I mean, my prayers go out to him. I don't want nothing to happen to him because he went down hard on his head. I was like, oh, my God. You know, initially, I was shocked. I wasn't laughing. I was making sure that he got back up. Then I laughed. Now that I know that he's okay, it's funny to laugh at. Everybody talking about, don't laugh at him. That's not funny. You wouldn't have stepped in the ring with him. You fucking right I wouldn't. Fuck out of here. Jake Paul looked like he was ready. Nate Robinson was bouncing all over the place. He didn't have any fight coordination offensively. Defensively, he was terrible. Jake Paul was taking easy licks. He jabbed him up. Wore him down, bam! Knocked his ass out. It's a bad look for the NBA community. He said he was going to make the NBA proud. That's why he been out the league for so long. Shit. Big trade news. Russell Westbrook was traded for John Wall. I think, um... I'm trying to remember who sent the pick. Because somebody sent a pick along with that uh, that trade. I just got to uh, double check that. Somebody sent a pick. Yeah, let me check that. One second, y'all. I guess they got the Wizards first round pick next year. That's what Houston has. It's a great trade for Houston. Bad trade for the Wizards. No, I'm just playing. I don't know. This trade on paper is disgusting. It, it's like vomit with candy on top of it. Because, I mean, John Wall is 100% allegedly, but we don't know if he's going to be healthy. I mean, they're both making $41 million next year. And the, the big question is, is Harden going to stay? Or is he going to go? Me personally, I think he's probably going to go. I think they're setting this shit up to be John Wall's team. But it's just sad that the Washington Wizards traded a legend in Washington, man. John Wall meant a lot to that community. He was, you know, he was known in that community. Like, a lot of people didn't want to see the franchise go, but... It's a sad day for Washington Wizards fans, for real. Because I know Wall did not... 
there were mixed reports that he wanted to stay or he wanted to go. We don't know. But what is the result of this? Washington can make the playoffs next year. I mean, you know, a Westbrook and Beal backcourt with Scott Brooks at the helm. Nobody knows Russ better than Scott. To go with, you know, Denny and Rui and Thomas Bryant, the Wizards could make a playoff run. They could go gun for that 7-8 spot. That's their potential. LeBron James, LeBron James gets a bag, a two-year, $85 million extension. I mean, I ain't got no, no problem with any brothers getting their paper up. And, you know, since LeBron had uh, a seven, wait, this is 17th season? This is 18th season this year, right? He has 18, 17th, 18th season, right? And he's still playing at an elite level, still is a top two player in the game. I mean, hey, some people, it's mixed reviews. It's like how the Lakers going to get better and yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they already got better. That's my counter to that argument. The Los Angeles Lakers have already gotten better. They bolstered their role players and they tightened up the finals MVP of last year. Now we just waiting on Anthony Davis. It's still no decision on AD's new contract. Word is he's waiting on Giannis to see if he's going to re-sign with the Bucks because Giannis wants to team up with LeBron and Anthony Davis. That'd be some fucked up shit if that really happens. I would lose a lot of respect for Giannis if that were to happen. But Rob Palink is looking like a genius today. I mean, he tightened up his dude, but I don't know. Like, I wonder what Anthony Davis is going to do. That's my big question. Leangelo Ball, the buff snatcher, is headed to Detroit. So this nigga snatched some, snatched some yays in China. And got locked up. And is going to the buff capital of the world in Detroit on a non-guaranteed contract. Congratulations to the Ball family. All three Ball kids are in the NBA. LeVar is the GOAT. He did it his way. It was unconventional as fuck. A lot of people either liked LeVar or hated LeVar. And I happen to be one of the ones that liked him because he watched... And live to see his dreams come true. To have all three of his children in the NBA at the same time. Major blessings. Larsa Pippen. Oh my God. Every day is a story with this whore. Yes, I said it. The disrespect levels are ungodly at this point and the audacity of this woman. She ought to be ashamed of herself as she hopped on Malik Beasley from the Minnesota Timberwolves tip. So she's allegedly banging him and has been seen in pictures with dude. And his wife allegedly left him. But here's my problem. Malik Beasley low-key had the right to do that because his wife was cheating on him a year and a half ago with Sua Cravens from the uh, Denver Broncos, or a former Denver Bronco who is no longer in the league. Look that story up. Go on Chronicles of Judah uh, 144 and watch that video of Malik Beasley versus Sua Cravens. They got into a fight over Malik Beasley's wife. I'm not I'm not 100% sure that that's the same girl, but I believe that's the same girl.
But Larsa Pippen, that's just disappointing. It's just sad. It's, not, it's a bad look. That's all I got to say on that. Paul George throws Doc Rivers under the bus and some of his current and former teammates, in my honest opinion. Paul George went on all the smoke. I kept it. I caught an excerpt of it. I just wanted to make sure that he was doing what they said he was doing. But Paul George made some good points, though. It's not like he just went on there and just trashed his team. But he said that Doc Rivers let the shit ride the whole season. They didn't make any adjustments. They didn't make any plays for Paul George. Doc Rivers wanted Paul George to be a Ray Allen archetype, which he can do. But Paul George wanted to be utilized a little bit more into the offense. Paul George made a lot of decent points. A lot of people will say, you know, people that hate him would say these are excuses. But he made some interesting points. He did play bad. But there is a reason. I mean, obviously, since he had shoulder surgery, he didn't go to training camp, for one. Number two, he missed, like, the first 15, 20 games of last season. Meanwhile, while the other Clippers were getting chemistry amongst each other, Paul George felt like an outcast. And they if they felt and you know a lot of the Clippers felt like they had to fit him in. When Paul says that he was underutilized, you know, he wanted more post plays, he wanted more uh ISO, he wanted more, you know what I'm saying? He didn't want to be a come off the screen and shoot guy. He wanted to create his own shot. I didn't watch the whole interview, but I caught the part where he was talking about his team. He didn't mention anything about beefing with the other Clippers, but Paul just basically said in that Denver series, the Clippers were cocky to a degree. The Clippers felt like it'll be okay. We got PG, we got Kawhi, but names don't mean nothing. Chemistry is the number one thing to win in a title. If you look at all the greatest teams, They had chemistry. Shaq and Kobe had great chemistry. Jordan and Pippen had great chemistry. And along and those other role players had chemistry. LeBron and D. Wade and Chris Bosch had chemistry. After in that second year. But I felt like, you know, he threw Doc under the bus for lack of adjustments in the Denver series. In particular. Now, let's bring up rest. How will rest affect the league? Will there be a lot of, I mean, 500 teams next year? It should be. A lot of these dudes had 12 months off. You look at Kevin Durant. You look at Stephen Curry. They had a whole, a whole year off. Damn near. If not a year. You know, due to the bubble situation. I mean, if you look at the teams that were eliminated early, they had a lot of time. The teams that never made the playoffs, like Atlanta, Detroit, Minnesota, you know, teams like that. They had a lot of time off. So I expect the season to be a lot more entertaining. Summer Walker and London on the track. This is a train wreck. I mean, this is a toxic relationship, bro. I'm not a fucking relationship counselor, for one. I don't normally do social commentary, but since this is a music channel, I might as well bring it up. I guess they got into another fight. I mean, Summer Walker just announced that she was having a baby by London on the track. She tried to, I guess, get his baby mothers under control, and that did not work out well. But here's the thing, though. Summer Walker's the only person out here saying anything. London on the track has been quiet. She has bashed old boy on social media, despite the fact that, you know, he has contributed to most of her music. Not all of it, but most of it. But I'm saying, though, 
if dude is that bad of a person, why are you with him and why are you having this baby? I mean, I can understand that sometimes, you know, lust can overtake you. I understand that people make crazy decisions when they're in love, but I mean, come on, man. London has been quiet and respectful and just been doing his music and getting to the bag. Meanwhile, the dude's baby mothers are just trashing this man all across the internet. He hasn't said one word. You got to commend somebody like that. That's a lot of shit to take. That's a lot of shit to eat. But my hopes, my thoughts and prayers are with everyone involved, though. All right, man. DJ Faggot Demix was officially fired from Complex. I mean, everyday struggle's been an everyday struggle ever since Joe Button left. I didn't even realize that that show still came on and people still did interviews with them. But he was allegedly officially let go from Complex. You know, he went live and was talking shit. Talking about, I'm a boss of my own. I got my own platform. Nigga, you was a complex employee, you fat motherfucker. And he blamed, you know, Chrissy Teigen and Freddie Gibbs for him being fired. No. You were talking shit about both of them getting involved and you were getting drunk on your lives and uttering the craziest shit in the world. Like, that nigga popped off at Chrissy Teigen. I was cracking the fuck up when I heard his commentary on that. I mean, I don't give a fuck about about this situation, but it was just some funny shit to report. And Freddie Gibbs continues to clown everybody, like always. I mean, he was was clowning LL. You know, and LL was like, man, it's killing me not to respond to this nigga. LL, Freddie Gibbs battle. What would y'all think about that? That would be interesting. But I think Gibbs would edge him out, but barely. You know, LL's built for battles. But 2020, I don't think anybody want to hear LL bars in 2020. Not me. But the competitor in him wants to respond to him on the mic. You can tell. It's just like a basketball player saying that. This is like when you're a basketball player and... One of these niggas challenge you to one-on-one and say that you suck and pull up your shitty footage on you. And then you have to go out there and kill this nigga. One-on-one. But, man, that's about it, man. (laughs) That's all I got to say on this episode. This episode 76. Ready to go, Nate, Nate, nigga. And I am out of here, man.